Hi Apartment Therapy, welcome to my 800 square foot studio in Toronto. I knew exactly what the layout would be pretty much from the first second that I saw the apartment and it sort of started with that first what I called the little nook with like my lounger and my low storage unit and my record player and all my vinyl. I sort of immediately saw that area and then that sort of propelled me into figuring out what the other areas were. They just sort of naturally felt like, okay, across from that would be the bedroom, living room would be in the middle, and then there's a very clear area sort of established as the dining area beside the kitchen. Since I have sort of done that and created these areas, that's something that I've learned is really, really just good for my mental health, and it just helps me keep everything organized and tidy and not feel like I'm just living and eating and sleeping and breathing all in one room. The biggest splurge for me for this apartment was definitely the couch. I knew I wanted a chaise style, and this was the only couch I had seen where the chaise was sort of horizontal as opposed to coming out vertically into the space. I didn't want it to come out vertically into the space because I thought it would really create a barrier between the nook and the bedroom and the living room, and I just wanted it to feel very open and to flow nicely together. So I love that the sofa is just sort of open on this one end. But for me, this green in this space, it. I think feels almost a bit like a neutral. Really highlighted the all the tones in the brick walls, but that also had a bit of contrast to it. It also weighs one million pounds, and I needed both my dad and my brother <laughs> to help me move it into the space. So the biggest challenge I faced in this apartment was definitely storage. I do have a really big closet, but it is the only closet in the space. I knew that it was gonna have to do double duty as the hall closet and my wardrobe closet. And so I spent a lot of time trying to plan out, um, you know, on a budget, how I could utilize that space and make it most efficient so that I wouldn't have to, right off the bat, bring in any really big bulky storage items into the living space. So on this side of the entryway, I originally had a bench here that just wasn't super functional. And so I ended up using one of these, um, two of these actually just unfinished wooden cabinets that are from Ikea and I had some leftover black paint. It's been really, really great for storage. The various storage solutions that I have in my apartment, I have my bar cabinet and bookshelves my little nightside dresser. It definitely doesn't feel too much like a bedroom piece, but it gives me all of the storage that I need. My low Besta unit in my nook that I use to store my vinyl and extra bedding. And I have a bench behind the sofa, which I use the underneath to sort of hide things. I have the ottoman in the living room and I tried to keep everything else sort of at the same level storage-wise. I didn't want to have anything really tall that would draw your eye to those pieces. I also have the kitchen island. The storage that I gained from having those double depth cabinets has been amazing. This looks like a closet. It's not a closet. It's a washer dryer. Uh, it's a very tiny little space in there. So my proudest DIY would definitely be the fireplace. That came together pretty easily and it was pretty cheap. Everything was under $200 and it was really minimal skill and effort to put it together. And these are just laid down onto the floor. I think there's opportunity to swap out the tiles if you wanted to change the look of the space or match to a particular color or piece of furniture. The other one that I did most recently was the archway above the bathroom door. I think it's a great focal point as you come into the apartment, you immediately see the arch. Grew up in a family where we were always sort of DIYing some project, but something me and my dad did together was the dining table. I had found these unfinished farmhouse legs and my dad had all of this beautiful 100, 150 year old BC fur that he had scooped up from a family member's farm. And that was basically free because I didn't have to pay my dad for the labor. He did it because he loves me. <laughs> 20 bucks and a bottle of scotch for my dad. That was it. My best find, I think, was probably this vintage safari chair. I got this on just an, a local online auction site. I think I got it for 150 bucks. I love all my chairs. All my chairs sort of have stories like that, that, you know, I almost always come across them on Facebook Marketplace. If you automatically type in safari chair, mid-century modern, even vintage sometimes, people who know 
those words describe what they're selling probably know that their things have value and are worth more money. So I always just search chair, table, <laughs> you have to go through a lot more. You have to be patient, but you'll find, you know, a gorgeous vintage chair and they've put it up for $10. So always just be more vague with the descriptors that you're using. It took me probably about two to three months to curate this space. I tried to pick really, really neutral, big furniture pieces so that I could change the vibe and the feel of the space just by swapping out, um, you know, a rug or artwork or textiles, things like that. I am a merchandise planning manager for a jewelry brand based in Toronto. And on the side, I own my own vintage and antique rug business. Right now I'm just selling online through Instagram and through my website, uh, but hopefully one day it'll grow into something more. I have been here almost two years now. Um, I moved in towards the end of 2020, uh, right in the middle of the pandemic. I owned my condo that I lived in before this. It was just a really, really tiny 400 and something square foot condo. For some reason, I, I couldn't even tell you why, I decided it would be a really, really good idea um, in the middle of the first year of the pandemic when I was unemployed to sell the condo, rent my dream apartment, and I decided to buy a little piece of land outside of the city. And I knew it was a crazy idea, and so I didn't tell anybody that I was doing it. And so I just did it. And within two or three months, I had the land, I had sold the condo, and I had found my dream apartment. Home to me is a place that should feel safe and cozy, a place where you can decompress and just relax, and it should just be filled with things that you love, things that you want to look at and that have meaning to you.